Well, first of all, welcome to today's uh, meeting and greetings from uh, UCU London region. And it's fantastic to see so many people here. <laughs> really, uh, just to reinforce one of the points the chair just made, really, about what we are, want to do today, really. I think it's falling on very much from last week's excellent meeting organised by the PCS Less Unity, where we want to discuss, really, what well, we're at a crucial juncture, I think, in terms of this dispute about pensions and how we defend our pensions and really we want to spend the rest of the day to four o'clock discussing quite concretely hopefully how we're going to go about doing that, hopefully listening and learning from each other's experiences, finding out what's going on in the other, other unions and what are the difficulties we face and how we want to get, get, get over them. So, and there will be uh, a statement being put to the meeting later on, which uh, there are a couple of amendments in at the moment, so that will be also voted on later on today. Um, but I just want to quickly start really with November the 30th. I know we probably all had our own moment this time, but I think it's worth just starting remembering what that day was like. The fact that up to two and a half million people took strike action, the fact that something like in three quarters and to, to a million people demonstrated across uh, England and, and, and Wales and Scotland on the, on the day. A fantastic show of, of strength, you know, similar and reminiscent to the marvellous, fantastic, great anti-war demonstrations in many ways. It wasn't just the fact that it was striking workers, it was the communities who came out, all those who fought and want to fight, not just in defence of pensions, but also in fight in defence of the welfare state more generally. It was that day which brought that open very, very clearly, it seems, 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 seems to me. And I think that's important to start there, really, because... Well, also that day wasn't. It wasn't simply a day of protest action. It wasn't simply one in which people just wanted to let off steam and then have their day and disappear. I know in my own union, right up and down the country, branch after branch, from discussing the build-up to this, it was made clear by the executive members, the branch members, the members, that this is not just one day will never be enough. In fact, that was our third day. I'll talk about that in a moment. It was never going to be enough. It was always going to be the case that we need to escalate that action and get more action if we're going to win. So it wasn't just about letting off steam. It was a day which launched a massive united struggle, which over 65% of the population supported the strikers. The government were left isolated on the day and divided, clearly not having the support amongst all the working people. They tend to divide and rule, private against public, all the things the chair touched on there, clearly failed and failed badly in their terms and fantastic show. It gave a glimpse of all the working people's power, how they can not only defend their pensions, but they can start to defend the wider struggles which this government are attacking us on. So I think that's an important starting point for us. But of course then what happens? We come to the end of December, just before Christmas, and then you find that rather than the great sums of the trade unions getting discussing how we can take things further, to mobilise, to build upon that fantastic day of action, we have some in the side trade union, mainly led by Brendan Barber and uh, Dave Prentice, trying to stop that action, to try to sell a pass on, 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 on the deal that uh, we took place. I think there we have, from then onwards, we have a debate and an argument inside our own unions about how things were, were going to take, take, take forward. I, mean, I just want to start with my own union for a moment. Um, of course, so my own union, UCU, our position is quite, is quite clear where, where we are with this, with this position. We're going to have a, a union meeting next week, an NEC meeting, where we're putting to there, we're going to reject the offer, number one, calling to name the day for another day of action, and we're absolutely clear, we much prefer to have two million out as we did on November the 30th. But if it's just 750,000 or a million, that's not bad. I will happen to start there. I think it's worth remembering how the struggle started in the first place. <laughs> We, on the 24th of March, you see, took strike action. Now, remember when we decided to do that, our officers, full-time officers, really had a go at us about this. Sally Hunt, our General Secretary, opposed it. They did their utmost to stop it. They said, we're wrong, we should have waited. But when somebody needs to break the logjam, and I think that was an important moment, which allowed June the 30th, when June the 30th happened, when four of us took strike action, it gave confidence to the wider movement to take the struggle on November the 30th. That's how we got from A to B. And if we have to do that again, so be it. We're quite happy that the left inside UCU, if it just means the PCS, the NUT, and uh, ourselves taking strike action, so be it. We will take that action and we'll start the <laughs> some actual points here, because it's important to understand why is it that our trade union leaders 
start to sell a part of these things. And remarks of Ockerpoo very well last week. He talked about the fatalism, the pessimism of some of our trade union leaders who believe that workers won't fight. It's absolutely true. And that pessimism is built upon, on one hand, actually, I think, many, the fear for many of them, <laughs> rather than to be excited about what took place on November 1st, for some, it frightening daylights out with the fear of not putting the genie back in the bottle. But there's a second reason, an important one, and that is because, ideologically, like to apprentice and others, accept the Miller Vans and the, and the Ed Balls' project, they accept the idea that we do work, the, the, the workers um, in the country live too long, that perhaps the risk, we can't afford these kinds of things. As soon as you accept that logic, you end up shaking hands with very people you actually end up in a, a opposing. That's why I'm really happy to hear that our action programme, we launched last a few weeks ago, Thousands have been sold, we've produced another 5,000, five which is an alternative to those ideas, which we need to carry along with the struggle, arguing for more militant action, but also an ideological argument that there is an alternative to cuts, there is an alternative to austerity. So, what does this all mean, mean, mean for us? Well, I think there is an argument to be taken place today, one which actually clearly states that this, we have to work out how we ensure the spirit of November the 30th not only happens again, but happens quickly. If we wait another four or five months, I know in my workplace what workers will say, is it worth losing another day's pay when you lot aren't serious about leading us? And that can't happen. We need to ensure that not only do we argue one day, but we start to plan for escalation. We need to, and I think also the timing of it. The motion which we've got going into our UC executive on, on Friday will argue that this strike action should not happen any later than when we come back from the February half term. No later than that. And I think that gives us time to organise it, to get together with the other unions who are prepared to do that, to set that date, set that date as quickly as possible so that we can take, take forward. I hear an argument which says that there's other struggles taking place, there's pain. There's jobs, of course there's pay, there's pay freeze, and we need to find that as well. But the idea that we surrender on pensions, that somehow we're in a stronger position to fight pay, to defend our job, is completely ludicrous. And everybody knows it's ludicrous as well. Yeah. So, I want to finally say, I'd like to thank actually, first of all, I think I want to join you congratulating Mark Savotka. Because I tell you now, when I hear, when I hear Mark Savotka come out and to fight like he did, and the lobby outside the TUC make it clear not only to reject it rightly out of hand, which every single trade union should have done, the so-called deal, not only that, but argued for action, he was absolutely right to do so. Also, what also must never happen again, I remember, like many of these people in this room will do, the 1984-85 minor strike, when Arthur Scargill was stabbed in the back, one by one by one, of every trade union leader, and led by themselves. We will not allow this to happen to Mark Scargill and Peter Arthur, who was the last to go to the There's a battle to be won. I'm absolutely convinced this battle is far from over, comrades. But, and the but is this, what we do from this meeting will make all the difference if we have a significant fight or not. If we go back to our workplaces, convince workers that we're going to organise and resist. But that starts my job next Friday to make sure we've got the hardest hitting motion passed at NEC. We're not going to be bad our members over this issue. It is not a significant agreement. Sally Hunt is going over our heads talking to our members without talking to the NEC, breaking every single democratic condition inside our union, we will be taking her to task on those issues as well. I don't want any lecturers from any general secretary about democracy where they can't even pick up the phone and talk to their NEC members. It's a disgrace. We've got to say no. Well, that's a shame. Solidarity. Let's go through this one.